so in this video we will see about the concept positional embedding okay this is an important concept introduced in transformers we'll say this concept with respect to text application okay for that purpose we'll take an example table study cat sleeping is on okay if i give you this sentence you can uh, this set of words you cannot understand what exactly this represent you cannot understand the meaning of it right but if i rewrite this if i rewrite this now you can understand what exactly the sentence is trying to convey okay that you have understood this is because the order in which words occurred okay so this is a proper sentence where uh, the words occurred in a sequential manner so in a proper sequence manner so you could understand the meaning but in the above exam in the above uh, set of words the words are not placed in a proper sequence so you could not understand okay that's the reason why we are having sequential models where the sentences are processed sequentially in sequential models for example if uh, the word study is to be processed all the previous words should be processed then only the word study can be processed okay to make sure that the word study is processed if if the model is processing word study it, it is already processed the word sleeping it has already processed it okay then only it can process the word study in sequential models okay so uh, if we should make this in a parallel like uh, the sleeping could be processed independent of the word study processing of the study if we could do it parallelly then we can we can uh, quickly perform the processing and get the contextual information get the meaning but this can be done uh, this can be done by the set of random words if if this is random then the words are random and the study is processed first and then sleeping but this is not giving us the meaning because the words are randomly placed to make sure that this will give us some meaning some this will give us some meanings to make sure that the order should be preserved the order in which the words occurred should be preserved for that purpose if i have something like this if i have something uh, some numbering like this then i can easily by looking at this i can tell that cat is the first word table is the last word or sixth word so now it means that though the words are not in the proper sequence or order still the numbering is preserving that order information the numbering is preserving right even if i have this uh, set of words and this numbering also we can understand what is the meaning of that particular set of words given by, by using this numbering so first we can keep the word cat then uh, is then sleeping on so we can make sure that which word comes first and what is the sequence of words that is maintained with this numbering okay this numbering is nothing but position information of the token right in at which the token occurred in the sentence at which position the token is occurred in the sentence that information is captured by this numbering right 
so this is position information of the token this numbering is position information of the token so the token we mean when we are processing obviously we are going to take the vector representation of the token right vector representation of the token so here the token is stable and let let us consider the 2d vector representation for the token let this be 0 0.1 comma 2 so this is the vector representation for the token table okay so in transformers uh, the token embeddings the token embeddings means it represents the actual meaning of the token it can uh, it contains the meaning of the token it means it contains the semantics of the token okay so the token embedding along with the token embedding the position at which that token occurred in the sentence that information also we are supposed to capture and keep it we are supposed to maintain in the in the transformer model the token embedding along with the token embedding position embedding information is also captured and preserved in differently it, it is being preserved okay so that the token embedding and position embedding for that purpose token embedding and position embedding are added okay so token embedding is nothing but this one so that is token embedding and if this is the position okay it's a number so we need it to be in a vector form okay then only we can add it to the token embedding so let me consider that vector form as 6 comma 0 because 6 represents the actual position at which the token occurred in the sentence and 0 is just an appending uh, dimension to make it as a vector okay just 0 it is then we can simply add this these two token uh, these two embeddings we can add and the table can be represented with 0 0.1 comma 2 plus 6 comma 0 this results in 6.1 comma 2 okay if i plot it if i plot this in a 2d 2d space okay if i plot it in a 2d space actually if uh, actually the token embedding for example this is 0 and uh, this is 1 this is 2 this is 3 4 5 let this be 6 okay okay so now and here it is 1 it is 2 okay so let the point uh, so in if i plot that uh, token representation in a 2d space so the point the token table is represented here at this position in the 2d space here it is placed okay after adding the position information the token is placed here okay it means there is a huge difference between these two points in the 2D space. This is just because of the position information, the position embedding that we considered. Okay, because the value is very huge. 6 is the larger value. Okay, so because of this position information, actually the semantics are lost the semantic information is lost because actually actually in the 2d space it is supposed to be present here but because of the positional embedding it moved to here okay but we know why we are plotting in the 2d space the similar words should be nearby and the opposite words should be far away in the 2d space if we are considering but because of the position information the 
table is placed in the 2D space in a different location. Here it is placed which is varying a lot. So here we can tell that semantic information is lost and position information is playing a major role if we are doing this directly. Okay. In transformers, we are supposed to maintain the positional information, but positional information should not should not ignore the semantics. It, we are not going to lose the semantics. We should not we should not maintain the positional information for the cost of losing the semantic information. So we need uh, position information to make sure that. The even though the words occurred in a different, uh, in different uh, in jumbling format also, the positional information will tell us at which position actually the word occurred in the sentence. In transformers, will have that information to make sure that it will process the words parallelly and still maintain the order in which the words occur in the sentence. Okay. For that purpose, positional embedding is required. But the way that we considered is not valid because, for example, if we are having 1,024 tokens in our example, in our uh, sample, then our vector will be 1024, 0. If I have 4,000 tokens, my vector will be 4,000, 0. So, this is a very huge number which should not be considered. If I have some 10,000, I will get 10,000 comma 0 as a vector. That should not be the case. Okay. So, one important point that here we have to consider is positional embedding should be bounded. Within the range, it should occur. If I consider this approach to represent the positional information, so we are going to consider this way. The If I have larger sentences, I will get larger, larger positional information. So there is no bounding for the positional information. If I maintain, uh, if I consider these embeddings as positional embeddings. So the first condition for positional embeddings is they should be bounded. Second point is, for example, if I have 10,000 tokens, if I have 10,000 tokens, I have to represent all the 10,000 tokens. I have to represent all the 10,000 tokens positional embeddings. But those embeddings, positional embeddings should not affect the token embeddings, uh, semantic embeddings, should not affect token embeddings. It should maintain the position information, but it should not affect the semantics of the tokens. It should not directly affect the semantics of the tokens. It is the positional embedding is just to to have the information about at which place the token occurred in the sequence came in the sequence. Okay, and token embeddings should not affect positional embeddings. What is this point? Positional embeddings. For example, I have one sample cat is dancing. I have another sample dog is dancing. In the first sample, cat is the first word. In the second sample, dog is the first word. So, the word, the cat should not affect the positional embedding. The token should not, the token should not affect the positional embedding. If I have the word to cat, my first uh, 
token representation will be this one. If I have the word dog, my first word representation will be position representation will be this one. This is the position representation. This should not be the case. The position is not affected by the token. Whatever the token might be, the first position should be the same. So if I am representing this with 0 0.1, comma 0 0.1, then here also the dog position should also be represented with 0 0.1, comma 0 0.1. So we have to have same embeddings if I have same position. Okay, for the, the token should not affect the position information. Okay, that is another important point. So by considering all these in the transformer models, they have considered positional embedding by using sine function. Okay, they considered by using sine function. If I have sine function, my embedding is bounded in between minus 1 to 1. Okay, for example, if I have this positional embedding and if I apply sine function, if I apply sine function for this, sine of 1, 0, 2, 4, comma, sine of 0. So, each value in this vector is bounded in between minus 1 to 1. So, in the vector, each value is bounded to minus 1 to 1. So, we could able to bound, bound the positional embedding information. And for any length sequence, we can use this sine function because sine function is an infinite sequence where we can have this continuously. So this we can have continuously for infinite sequence. Right? So any number of tokens that we can have will be represented, we can easily represent by using the sine function within the bounded range. Okay? So this we have we are bounded to and the length length is not affecting the so the fourth point is length length of the sentence should not impact on the token embeddings that is one more important point so with this even though the length is 10000 if we are having 10000 tokens we are still have we are applying 10000 tokens uh, sign of 10000 which is uh, still in between minus 1 comma 1 the value is in between minus 1 comma 1 so we are able to maintain the infinite sequence by within the bounded range but what is the problem can we simply use the sine function if i am simply using the sine function so i am getting the same value for multiple positions okay the same value we are going to get for multiple positions see if I tell that cat is there in first position and sleeping is also in first position, can you decide what the word, what the first word is? No, right? So, having the same value for multiple positions is not correct. Though it is bounded, though it is able to uh, represent infinite sequence within the bounded range, but it is repeating. So, because uh, multiple, multiple positions are getting the same value, we can't simply use the sine function. We can't simply use the sine function. So, we need something more to make sure that multiple, though 
the sequence should be bounded and should represent infinite length still should be unique each position should be represented in a unique form for that purpose along with the sine function we also consider cosine we also consider cosine function so now and uh, uh, the sine function and cosine function we are considering along with that we we also make sure that the variation in the frequencies cos function might be like this okay so that we could even the cos function also we are bounding it in between minus 1 to 1 so the positional embedding values are bounded and both sin and cosine can be represented for infinite length and at different positions we will get different values for sin and cosine and to make sure that we properly maintain the positional embeddings okay here we are considering sin and cosine only one time we can consider it for multiple times for multiple frequencies i will consider another sine function with another frequency actually this is a sine function the bigger one and uh, this one is a cos function and this one is again representing the sin function so we can take different frequencies sin functions and cos function combinations to have proper positional embeddings to have proper positional embeddings and by considering these conditions the position information should not affect the token embeddings and token embeddings should not affect the positional information so now we are able to consider this sin and cosine information so now the vector is about sin of something and cosine of something if i have if i am representing it in 2d this is the point if it is something like a multi dimensional so i can have cos uh, sin uh, sin of some frequency of some value cos of some frequency sin of another frequency so we can have this combination and we can make sure that the position information is maintained without affecting token embeddings in the transformers so this is the reason why we have sin and cosine functions and in the next video we will discuss about the actual positional embedding a formula it's a combination of sin and cosine we'll look into the actual formula in the next video thanks for watching i hope you understood clearly and if you have any doubts you can uh, comment thank you